So I ordered 10 of them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll do it for a seminar. Or, I mean, a Friday night or seminar or whatever. Sparks as well. Um, Primordial experience. The Dzogchen meditation, Manjushwati Mitra, translated by two dudes. This is the first English language translation of one of the most reverend texts in Tibetan Buddhism. What is presented is a learned discourse on the relation of Ati or other systems of Indian thought, Buddhist and Hindu through an examination of the key concept of bodhicitta, or enlightened mind. That sound good? I ordered 10 copies. I thought we'd put it up for voting later. That's exactly what you've done. I've ordered first and voted later. Who is, who is the translator of that? Two dudes. <laughs> <laughs> now, Kai Norbu and Kennard Lipman. Uh, Rama True Light. <coughs> Rama, Rama True Light. <laughs> Rama True Light. <coughs> Mama True You, all right. Mama Pajama. <laughs> That's the other one. In the same catalog as. Uh, this work, which I didn't put up here. Queen of Sheba. This is a, the densest, richest, and most chocolately cake we've ever eaten. It is ground almonds, bittersweet chocolate, its main ingredient. How many did you order? Joy is lettered, <laughs> joy is lettered elegantly on its surface, and slivers of almonds adorn its side. One thin slice of this cake goes further than you've ever dreamt. Packaged in ribbon tissue on a gift t- in a gift tin, our queen is eight inches wide and weighs almost one and a half pounds. That, I, we have figured that that was part of our diet. And, uh, you have to eat that you one. Read about like one. one. <laughs> <laughs> if the <male laughs> likes it, the Lord is king. So that's the. Um, that's from uh, Bernie. Bernie's. Bernie left. No, Bernie uh, Glassman. <coughs> They're a bakery in New York. Bakery? Yeah. That's what they give you before you read the Sparks mm-hmm. of Life book. They have books and things to eat in the same kind yeah. of one. Yeah. Yeah, so you don't have to It's a very interesting Shambhala <laughs> press you cannot beat. <laughs> and because if you get dulled out on the book, you chomp away on their products. <laughs> It's funny, but that used to be the case. They used to have them starting. The spiritual, the spiritual teachings of Ramama, Rama Maharshi, life and teachings of Sri Rama, Rama, are not only important for the Indian, but also for the Western not only really fun and record raising the is also a one that's very stupid concept. Forward by C. 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 Jung. C. G. Jung. I think this is pretty good. For seven, seven, seven bucks, you can't lose. Unless it's bad. If that's what I think it is, it's real bad. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So I've ordered ten copies of each. And uh, I'll leave the catalog up here if you think there's some other things we ought to order. Let me know. And uh, obviously we can add to the list. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, Ken is going to do fifteen. Yeah. Any m- messages the before last. we start? Yeah. The coffee is in the other room. Yeah. It's near the chocolate. Don't go too close to the chocolate. There's a guard dog there. <laughs> Here only. <laughs> it's enlightenment chocolate. <laughs> Tonight is a fitting night to talk about this subject of bribery. Yes. Bribery is a good subject. People have been coming to the door pushing bribes to avoid tricks. Um, so 15, 
was the last of the series of three. Uh, 13, 14, 15. 13 had dealt with whether there are gods. 14 with whether the gods' uh, providence extends to such insignificant things as us. And 15 will be if there are gods and their providence does concern us, can they nonetheless be bribed? Uh, Excuse me, is there an extra book? Sure. Now, we want to uh, start by reviewing a certain principle, the principle that's been going in, uh, you might call it the principle of hierarchies. Uh, whenever there are two levels, higher and a lower level, the higher is always the model, <coughs> the lower the copy. So, if there's anything positive on the lower level, uh, what would we expect on the higher level? More, more positive. More positive. Conversely, if there's anything negative on the upper level, what would we expect on the lower level? More negative. More. So now this principle will come into play in uh, this argument here. We're uh, going to compare gods and men. And we're going to compare them <coughs> in terms of leadership. <coughs> and whether, uh, so we're going, this will bring in the questions of art. familiar from reading Plato, the Republic, and various other dialogues, some notions about art. For instance, uh, the questions, uh, we'll be familiar with those questions about who benefits from the practice of an art, uh, the practitioner or the person in the practice of it. And so, reflections, there will be reflections on leadership and uh, art, and this principle about model and copy will come into play. Would you cite the principle again, please? That is, whatever positive is on the level of the copy will be more so positive uh, on the level of the model. Uh, whatever negative on the level of the model will be more so on the level of the copy. Oh, why is that? Hmm? Why is that? This is, uh, for instance, uh, if anything is beautiful in this world, the source uh, of the beauty will be more beautiful than the beautiful Yeah, I thing. understand that that's what you're saying. I asked why that was. Why that was? <coughs> and then you say the negative is the reverse, that there's more negative 
in the coffin and left in the model. Yeah. Does that is that is it easier to understand just following the positive? No. Do you have any problem with the positive? Also? I don't understand why you say that, but because you say the positive is double in the model and the negative is double in the copy, or more so, mm -hmm. then that confuses me. Oh, <coughs> is it the idea that the negative? Uh, <coughs> maybe we don't need this last part. But, uh, understand model and copy that the model has the positive virtue all the more so or to say it another way whatever is present secondarily is present primarily on the higher level mm -hmm. you agree with that mm -hmm. okay this other part let's let me hold that for a while okay okay because uh, uh, I, I think we'll find it. If we don't find it, then I made something up. And I don't want to impose on you what I made up. Uh, it's, it's, not really a, it's not really something you impose. You, you gave it as a principle. Mm -hmm. And I think Carol's asking, what's the principle? What's the principle? And the point is, maybe you didn't need the word principle. Mm -hmm. this point, yeah. Uh, well, is that the hierarchy. I was, yeah, I was adding on to this, and I didn't need to keep that on the level of principle. Or, you can make the point. Yeah. Um, you might have had it as a hypothesis. Maybe. Let me have it as a hypothesis. Uh, equally with the positive. Um, I think there is reason with the positive to um, we can hold it as a hypothesis. Rather than a principle. Yeah. Okay. And therefore, if we're holding these as a hypothesis, uh, I'm going to hypothesize that whatever would occur on the level of the gods of anything negative, we would expect all the more so to find it on the level of men. Was that preceded by if? Huh? Was that preceded by anything? Yeah, if we find anything negative on the level of the gods, <coughs> we would expect all the more so to find it on the level of men. There's a form of argument <coughs> which is uh, Sometimes, uh, 
Mm -hmm. Are you talking about chapter 15? 15, yeah. Okay, then I have a, I have a question. Mm -hmm. And, well, first I want to say something that I have a question. Mm -hmm. The principle that we've operated on in this noetic society as long mm -hmm. as I've been here is that we read the text, right. stay with the text, and then we get our models as we go through. That's right. And I'd like to understand what it is about Proclus or teaching or whatever it is. Maybe there's a problem that we need to go through it and review it before we actually get to the text. Um. Well, actually, the text will... Uh, the... I just want to introduce it this way. Uh, Can you explain what it is about the introduction that is important introducing it before we get into the text? thought this part here we had already gotten uh, in previous reading and it was a review. Oh, well you, you brought it up as this, that was chapter 15. Yeah, and but I was uh, reviewing something about model and company, I thought. And the fact that it has to do with leadership in art I don't know, I just, uh, I thought it would help. putting up the kind of argument I thought that uh, one of the things I was to do was to say something about what I see. Um, I thought of it as giving an overall structure which not a model of the argument. Uh, we see the overall picture if we read the text. Yeah. So I'm going to erase it all off first. I did it wrong again. Start reading.
so I want to pull it. Because Mark, where are you jumping? <coughs> the third problem after these we shall connect with the former and survey how we are to assume the unpervertible in the gods who perform all things according to justice and who do not in the smallest degree subvert its boundary or its undeviating rectitude in their providential attention to all other things and in mutations of human affairs. I think, therefore, that this is apparent to everyone that everywhere that that, w that everywhere that which governs according to nature and pays all possible attention to the felicity of the governed after this manner becomes the leader of that which it governs and directs it to that which is best. For neither has the pilot who rules over the sailors and the ship any other precedaneous end than the safety of those that sail in the ship and of the ship itself nor does the physician who is the curator of the disease endeavor to do all things for the sake of anything else than the health of the subjects of his care, whether it be requisite to cut them or administer to them a purgative medicine. Nor would the general of any army or a guardian say that they look to any other end than the one to the liberty of those that are guarded and the other to the liberty of the soldiers. Nor will any other to whom it belongs to be the leader or curator of certain persons endeavor to subvert the good of those that follow him, which it is his business to procure, and with a view to which he disposes in a becoming manner everything belonging to those whom he governs. <coughs> if therefore we grant that the gods are the leaders of the whole of things, and that their providence extends to all things, since they are good and possess every virtue, how is it possible that they should neglect the felicity of the objects of their providential care? Or how can they be inferior to other leaders in the providence of subordinate natures? Since the gods indeed always look to that which is better, and establish this as the end of all their government. But other leaders overlook the good of men and embrace vice rather than virtue in consequence of being perverted by the gifts of the depraved. So, what's the third problem? <coughs> the 
assuming the unpervertibility in the dark. <coughs> example yet. Before the example, <coughs> there is a generality. Mm -hmm. What's the generality? That the gods are the leaders of that which they govern. And? And directs it to that which is best. according to nature. Can, can we read that whole sentence there? Yeah. yeah. Because uh, it says um, that uh, everywhere that that which governs according to nature, so in general, that which governs according to its nature, and then what follows is what that which governs according to its nature. They are leaders? Mm -hmm. And they direct to the best. Now, under that which governs, <coughs> he first discusses classes of men, the pilot, physician, General, Guardian, what? Hmm? What is um like we skip down to? I think therefore. What about the rest of that first sentence? Seems like there's more in that than we put up there. I, what is unpervertible? That means that they're not influenced or changed or mm -hmm. can be um, perverted. Can't perverted. Be, mm -hmm. Can be influenced toward right. unjust acts to swerve or subvert uh, the boundary in the smallest degree. Which what boundary? Justice boundary. Justice, justice. boundary. Okay. So it's in <coughs> respect to justice that they are unpervertible. Mm -hmm. Both its. Pardon. Both its. What's that? Both its goes to justice. 
subvert justice boundary and mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> Yes. That would be its principle, wouldn't it? Now, um, are you including from this list Is that where we are right now? From the pilot, physician, general, etc. Yeah, he's going to say something about each one of those. Yeah. I'm going to ask you, I like where you put the problem up there. All right. um, how are we to assume? Is that answered? Like, how are we to assume? That they are unpervertible? Yeah. yeah. How are we to assume? That's what's to be argued in the whole uh, thing. That's curious. For yeah, but what does that mean? I mean, I, it's kind of hard for me to understand. How are we to assume? Well, I think the second sentence answers that, doesn't it? How are we to assume? Mm -hmm. I think, therefore, mm -hmm. this is the conclusion that this is apparent to everyone. <laughs> so that the, we are to assume what is apparent to everyone. Right, right. <coughs> that's where you look at it, Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So the answer to his question, <coughs> he bases his assumptions, in this case, on an argument he believes is apparent to everyone. And then he's going to bring Based up... Based upon a principle. Then he's going to bring up uh, examples of the principle. And then after that, uh, only after that, objection. So he's moving on what you might call the prima facie level. Mm -hmm. It's apparent to everyone that that which governs uh, the ranks to the best, according to these examples. But we have to keep in mind that he's dealing with the possible objection that it's possible to pervert the gods by bribes, by gifts, sacrifices. Isn't that the third problem? That's <coughs> the third problem. Uh, but that that is how we're supposed to assume it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, right there he's made his, all his statements. Now, he's made his statement. And now what's he going to do with the rest of the words? Yeah. He's going to uh, <coughs> take the negative. He's going to use this <coughs> this statement in his argument uh, we'll see how uh, he's going to construct some reductio ad absurdum arguments uh, can you put it a little plainer what's he doing with the rest of the words in other words he's really made the statement He's given the problem, and he's told us how we're supposed to assume it. And therefore, he's really answered the question, hasn't he? I think how also includes by what right are we to assume? Not only in what way, but how can you assume that? Uh, setting out with a question and then he, he makes a statement that that's what he's going to demonstrate. Yeah. That's how I saw that. That's I right. think therefore, and then he's going to start with the de demonstration of that mm -hmm. proposition, I think therefore. 
And then you finally get to the question at the bottom of the page, starting with if therefore we grant. So the argument, so what follows should should be arguments that would sub- demonstrate uh-huh. that proposition. What he's done so far is, he's, yeah, he's made a statement. He's made a statement and he's said how. given examples in relation to men. I have a problem with this one little phrase here that says, after this manner becomes the leader of that which it governs. I don't understand that. That which governs. After this manner <coughs> becomes the leader. Uh, in the, by paying, all, by ruling according to nature, pays all possible attention to the felicity of the governed. That's the manner. Mm-hmm. What is becomes the leader? Uh, uh, that which governs becomes the leader. That which it governs? No, that which governs. That's not what it says. That which governs according to nature becomes the leader of that which it governs. Of that which it governs. That which governs becomes the leader of that which it governs. Well, it's it's already saying that everywhere that which governs according to nature Mm -hmm. and pays all possible attention to the felicity of the governing Mm -hmm. after this manner becomes the leader of that which it governs. Mm -hmm. Seems redundant. Who becomes the leader of that which it governs? Who or it's what? It's it's apparently, it's that which governs according to nature and pays right. all possible mm-hmm. attention. That's well, right. It's not redundant with these leaders. It's leading to direct the best as an additional action rather than governing governing leadership. <laughs> and then there, and you could have missed the other. And I didn't, I missed the quick answer how you answered her about after this man. Well, Ruth pointed it out. To her. Ruth, Ruth made a distinction between leader and that which governs as leader being something in addition to governing. Leading, leading being directing it to that which is best, which is over and beyond the uh, your governor. Order governor. governor. So that which governs according to nature becomes the leader. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can see that. But there's a certain manner in which this, after this manner, <coughs> this manner refers to... It has to, to do that first. has to become governed according to nature. It becomes, it becomes the leader by governing in that way, in that manner. <coughs> mm-hmm. Okay, then you see, I presume that it goes down to the if and we continue that one. Right, right. Gina, uh, you dropped the ball. Well, so far it seems like after this manner can go to something after. With yeah, Gina. Or it goes prior. Gina, you dropped the ball. I dropped the ball. Yeah, she made a very fine point. You dropped it. Okay. Which one? Gina <laughs> <laughs> has an experience, of course, that. in geometry. She's a geometrician. She said, hey, this is a, this is a geometrical study. It proceeds as a geometry. Yeah. All right. Okay. If you do that, then he doesn't proceed just by examples, does he? We went to that second sentence and we said that's the statement of the proposition that is which to be proved, mm-hmm. didn't we? Because of the use of the word everywhere. All right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then there's a series of examples. They're not <coughs> merely a series of examples because there there's an attempt to include everything as in there. That is to say, it's making a case that nothing is excluded. Mm-hmm. Then it's exhaustive. Mm-hmm. Nor will any other Right? That's the one. That's the appeal to there's nothing. There's nothing 
that you can think of as being excluded. Shouldn't be given that. If that's the case, then he's going from examples to exclusion. He's including everything. Nothing is excluded. That's why the therefore has the force of a geometrical proposition, doesn't it? That's the conclusion, I suppose. This is a demonstration. All right? If therefore we grant, all right? Agree? Mm -hmm. Because if everything above can be asserted in that way, then that can follow, could count it as a conclusion. Yeah, it includes everything. Right. right. <coughs> and that therefore fits into that major piece of statement, which is that this is something that happens everywhere, therefore including the realm of the gods. Right there was conclusion of going from what happened. If therefore we grant that the gods are the leaders of the whole of them, it then pulls all together. Right? Sure. generates a couple of rhetorical questions depending upon conclusion, which is his next page. Is that the way you see it? Yeah. How about is that the way you see it then? Mm -hmm. something about the gods on page 55. Is that what you're reading? Mm -hmm. yeah. And <coughs> he's been saying that none of these would subvert the end of their art uh, or uh, Well, maybe you could go through and show that that's the case. And if anyone says that the gods uh, did, they would then be inferior to these other leaders. And so the second rhetorical question is, how can they be inferior to other leaders in their providence of subordinate natures? Yeah, that are in their care. Mm -hmm. As long as they're governing according to nature. Right. Mm -hmm. And paying all its mm -hmm. possible attention to the felicity of the governed. Right. And directing it to what it does. Question <coughs> How can they be inferior Since the gods indeed always look to that which is better. What does that have to do with inferior? That's going to, uh, this is uh, here called a rhetorical question. Uh, this is going to argue against the point of inferiority. 
No, but the petition to God always looks to that which is better. That's right. I want you to do it in the tribe. I said it's out in God's being saved. They're not. I know, that's why I can't understand this question. Uh, the question... Well, it goes on the other pages. Or how can they that's be answered? The how is it possible they should neglect the felicity of the objects of their providential care? See, what's in the background of this is the question whether if the gods exist and their providence extends to all things, whether we may still do uh, impious acts uh, and bribe the gods with sacrifices uh, and so then the question is if the gods are leaders how is it possible they should neglect the felicity of the objects of their providential care how can they be inferior to other leaders in the providence, providence of subordinate natures. Because if pilots and physicians and generals and guardians uh, would not <coughs> neglect the felicity of their subject, how can we think the gods would? Hmm? Well, that's all. That's been established previously. Oh, that's, right? uh, that's been established previously that the gods are superior, and uh, but the next sentence is not in the Torah. No, but you mean since? Yeah. Uh, no. no, that's. But I believe that it is an answer to the question: How can they be inferior? How can they be inferior since? They always look to that which is better. They can't be inferior if they always look to that which is better. <coughs> because, oh, because if that is their end, if they establish that is their end, <coughs> well, because it, it <coughs> now I'm going to demand that we read this text uh, word by you, word of course you do because that's what we're here for because it's going to come out uh, pardon it's going to come out as we read right it's better than that it's in the same sentence kind of. <coughs> i'm sorry i would do a sentence ahead of you now i see where you got your question but that answers the question that you raised really the next sentence. Yeah. Okay. So the next sentence. It's where the sentence follows. Well, they, how can they be in serious? Well, since they're always looked for that which is better and established this is the end of all their governments, but other leaders overlook the good of men and embrace vice rather than virtue and consequence of being perverted by the gifts of two praise. Just stay in that sentence. Action going with the gods and the action as it goes to man, and notice in which way it goes in both cases. All right, you got the first one very well. The gods indeed always look to that which is better, and higher, better. See the image? Okay. And establishes the end of the government. All right, but other leaders overlook the good and embrace vice rather than virtue. Why? Consequences of being perverted by gifts. 
of the deprived. See, they go down. Uh -huh. Look, one is looking up, and because yeah. of that they can do what they do. The deprived condition, or vice is the condition, because the leaders are looking down rather than up. Uh -huh. right, doesn't it? Is that the way you see that? That's right. So that's the principle you were looking for before. That could certainly be a basis for establishing the first part of it. Yeah, and there's more of the principle in the next thing. Yeah, right. Right, right. Because that's what he's going to be pushing. Just that conclusion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that shows then, doesn't it, that um, gods are, like it says in the first sentence in the chapter, unconvertible. Yeah. Whereas men can be yeah. convertible. Yeah. yeah, but if they were... By those less than them. Right. Less than themselves. But if they That's were the iron convertible, version. if they were convertible, that they would have to do it in this way. They wouldn't have to be able to look towards the good. And and, you, know, you take the negative of that principle. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a certainly good idea. Yeah. They're, they're going to overlook the good of men. That's going to be the first thing. When you see someone who is perverted and depraved and not a good leader, the first thing you can say about him, he's not looking out for the good of, of men. Or he's not looking at, uh, he has overlooked the good of men. You can look for a cause in being, accepting the gifts from the deprived. Mm -hmm. Unless he's perverted. Huh? <laughs> okay, okay. Hope no one notices that we knocked off the whole paragraph. Yes. All right, go ahead. <laughs> and universally, whether you are willing to call the gods leaders, or rulers, or guardians, or fathers, a divine nature will appear to be in want of no one of such names. For all things that are venerable and honorable subsist in them primarily. And on this account indeed, here also some things are naturally more venerable and honorable than others, because they exhibit an ultimate resemblance of the gods. But what occasion is there to speak further on this subject? For I think that we <coughs> hear from those who are wise in divine concerns, paternal, guardian, ruling, and the Paeonian powers. I read that one. The what? Paeonian is the position. Okay. Comes from the position of the gods. Paeon. Okay. For I think that I thought that was a hymn to Apollo. Do they have another term? Well, there are Paeons which are called hymns, and yeah. Apollo is involved in it. But there was a physician named Paeon who, in the Iliad in uh, book five, cures Aedes, who was wounded with an arrow. And also Apollo's involved in it. And Paeonian means healing, healing powers. Well, it's in, well, I think your argument then is that there's a class there's a class that includes paternal, guardian, ruling, mm -hmm. and uh, certain kinds of powers. Yeah, um, we had some of them in these examples previously. Curious word there, isn't it? Yeah, okay, sure. Well, yeah, that's one of Taylor's, but it's particularly apt in this uh, case because it's the position of the gods. And if Taylor made anybody look it up by using it, uh, there was some nice things to learn about it. It is a curious word, though. Do you have more stuff by chance in your back pocket? Are not giving out? No, but All right. okay. it's in book uh, five of the Elliot. Okay. <coughs> okay. <coughs> I'll repeat that. But what 
<clears throat> but what occasion is there to speak further on this subject? For I think that we hear from those who are wise in divine concerns, paternal, guardian, ruling, and paeonian power celebrated. How is it possible, therefore, that the images of the gods, which subsist according to nature, regarding the end which is adapted to them, should providentially attend to the order of the things which they govern, but that the gods themselves, with whom there is the whole of good, true and real virtue, and the blameless life, should not direct their government to the virtue and vice of men? And if the image of the gods are dying, why wouldn't the gods die? And how can it be admitted on this supposition that they exhibit virtue victorious in the universe and vice vanquished? Will they not also thus corrupt the measures of justice by the worship paid to them by the depraved, subvert the boundary of undeviating, undeviating science, and cause the gifts of vice to appear more honorable than the pursuits of virtue? For this mode of providence is neither advantageous to these leaders nor to those that follow them. For to those who have become wicked, there will be no liberation from guilt, since they will always endeavor to anticipate justice and pervert the measures of desert. But it will be necessary, which it is not lawful to assert, that the gods should regard as their final end the vice of the subject, subjects of their providence and neglect their true salvation and consequently be al alone the causes of adumbrant good. This, go ahead. <coughs> Okay. Next this universe also and the whole world will be filled with disorder and incurable perturbation depravity remaining in it and being replete with the discord which exists in badly governed cities well, some people would say that's around already <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is being governed by nature yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you sure that there's something good governing us, man? What is yeah, we want the we want the other argument. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> times have changed. Yeah, right. I mean, if we're, it being, if we're being governed by the gods, what would it be like without them? Right? Why did he say back up there uh, that it was necessary, which it is not lawful to assert? Mm -hmm. Why does he add that? No, it's not lawful to assert that. Because the gods, uh, what is lawful to assert is that the gods always look to that which is better and establish this as an end. Well. But if the gods <coughs> did not direct their government to the virtue and vice of men, then gods should regard as their final end the vice of the subjects. Well, what is it that I they're think, not I think Carol's to point is, is, uh, is not Carol, but uh, you're interested in why is that phrase being inserted there? Yeah. Yeah. It's not lawful to assert. Yeah. <coughs> what is it that's not lawful in that it, sentence? Yeah, well. Oh, that the gods should regard as their final end the vice of the yeah, isn't this argument reductio ad absurdum? Mm -hmm. That is absurd. The whole yeah. thing is absurd. Right? So it's, but it will be necessary. Right? This is a conclusion. Mm -hmm. By the way, it's not lawful to assert that it's, it's so absurd. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so he's saying, is he not, that given what, given the above, it would be necessary to assert it, though it wouldn't right. be lawful. Mm -hmm. They would have to assume it's the problem is necessary. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's abhorrent to it, right? Yeah. They would be right. looking. Yeah. 
they'd be looking down because they would be taking on the the unlawful <laughs> methods of their subjects, right? neglecting their true salvation. They'd be doing like men. They would be looking down. Mm -hmm. Also, among religious uh, people, there is a fear of saying things that is false about the God. And uh, if you're going to say anything, even if it's something that would necessarily follow like this, put this disclaimer in there, it is not helpful to the surface. It would necessarily follow as uh, if the gods should not direct their government to the virtue and vice of men. Since it cannot follow, it's not lawful to assert, then they must direct their government. they were to direct their, if they were to concern themselves with gifts rather than the virtue and vice of men, uh, we would wind up in a situation where the universe and the whole world will be filled with disorder and incurable perturbation, which would be neither advantageous to these leaders nor to those that follow them. Where, do you, where, do you, where would you say the beginning of that argument that picks up? Or how would you break it up? Uh, what we're calling, I think, the absurd. Mm -hmm. Just a rhetorical question, so the okay, force of yeah. reductive. Mm -hmm. Start there. Oh. Right. Mm -hmm. So we do it? Oh. So then what precedes we should agree with, should we not? Mm -hmm. Therefore, if anyone, if no one has a problem with that first part, I we could just continue. Agree? Mm -hmm. That's what we said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't the world filled with this one? <coughs> That would be another question. Yeah. How is it possible that there are the gods still exercising providence in the world like this? Unless it is <coughs> well governed the way it is. starting on the word and universally on page 55 down to the question that starts how. Mm -hmm. If there are any, then the absurd and proceeds. Mm -hmm. okay. The last sentence is a little confusing to me. So it's not perfectly impossible that part should be given a certain nature. That's a question. <coughs> oh, is it not? So, though, is it not? Is it not perfectly impossible that parts should be a governed according to nature in a greater degree than wholes, human than divine concern, in images than primary causes? Is that not impossible? Yeah, we're getting the copy before the model. Yeah. It's so impossible, it's perfectly impossible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, 
before we get off it, uh, I'd like to uh, pause on two sentences, the second and the third sentence in that second paragraph. It's, uh, it includes both his idea of the gods and the consequences of it. Right? For all things that are venerable and honorable subsist in them, primarily sometimes he uses the word primitive word. Right here. Since, since all that's venerable and honorable subsists in the gods primitively or primarily, then there certainly will not appear to be in want for any such names as, as were used a moment ago. Mm -hmm. The next sentence I think is, is extremely interesting. And on this account, given that, right, indeed, you know what? There's some things that are going to uh, naturally and uh, more venerable and honorable than others. That's what they're going to be because they exhibit an ultimate resemblance to the gods. Mm -hmm. Therefore, that order <coughs> is scalable. That's a ranking, isn't it? Mm -hmm. There are also some things naturally more venerable and honorable than others. That's ranking. The reason they can be ranked is because they exhibit an ultimate resemblance to the gods who themselves contain those things primarily, primarily or primitively. Yeah. When he says here also, the here refers to the realm of men. Mm -hmm. so well then if it, ex if it exists, in the gods inherently would inherently be a word to code to inherently prim primarily, primarily primitively then because of that yeah. well the, the gods are the models and men are copies right therefore <coughs> there's a resemblance there's an yeah yeah, yeah. I guess we can go in the last paragraph. Yeah. <coughs> Hence, if men properly attend to the welfare of men and governing them, honoring some but disgracing others, and everywhere giving a proper direction to the works of vice by the measures of virtue, it is much more necessary that the gods should be the immutable governors of the whole of things. For men are allotted this virtue through similitude to the gods. But if we acknowledge that men who corrupt the safety and well-being of those whom they govern imitate in a greater degree the providence of the gods, we shall ignorantly at one and the same time entirely subvert the truth concerning the gods and the transcendency of virtue. For this, for this, I think, is evident to everyone that what is more similar to the gods is more happy than those things that are deprived of them through dissimilitude and diversity. So that if among men indeed the uncorrupted and undeviating form of providence is honorable, it must undoubtedly be in a much greater degree honorable with the gods. But if with them mortal gifts are more venerable than the divine measures of justice, but if with them mortal gifts are more venerable than the divine measures of justice, with men also earth-born gifts will be more honorable than Olympian goods. And the band, than the blandishments of vice and the works of virtue. Hmm. Okay. I think there. Excuse me. 
Could you just okay. read the rest of it and then it's read then it read yeah. over, huh? Yeah. yeah. With a view, therefore, to the most perfect felicity, Plato in the Laws delivers to us through these demonstrations the, hypar the hypothesis of the gods, their providential care extending to all things, and their immutable energy, which things, indeed, are common to all the gods, but are most principal and first according to nature and the doctrine pertaining to them. For this triad appears to be, for this triad appears to pervade as far as to the most partial natures in the divine orders, originating supernally from the occult genera of the gods. For a uniform hypoxis, a power which providentially takes care of all secondary natures, and an undeviating and immutable intellect, are all in the gods that are prior to and in the world. Mm -hmm. <coughs> this, uh, <coughs> but if with them mortal gifts are more venerable than the divine measure of justice, with men also earthborn gifts will be more honorable than Olympian goods. I think we then have to uh, supply, but men, insofar as they are practicing these arts, do not uh, honor uh, this way. So, gods do not. Uh, he probably felt by the time he got to that point he didn't need to grind it out. So, um, the 13, 14, and 15 had set out to show uh, in relation to the gods that there are gods <coughs> that their providence extends to everything and not just the great things and that they are unperverdable uh, that is they will not subvert the good of their subjects uh, merely because of gifts from men Uh, are, are there any questions about this last one, 15? I think you've got a very interesting principle in there. which, of course, is evident to everyone. Mm -hmm. right, third sentence into that paragraph. <coughs> For this, I think, is evident to everyone, that what is more similar to the gods is more happy than those things that are deprived of them through dissimilitude and diversity. He's got that range. The more you resemble the gods, the closer you are in philosophy. The more you proceed <coughs> down from them, the more you're in disunity. And yeah, not standard. Happy. Yeah, not happy. Yeah, I'm not happy. happiness goes along with it. And uh, to the degree that you're honorable, must be undoubtedly being a more a much greater degree honorable to the gods. Right, it's, it's honorable among the men, it's even more so among the gods. Because they obviously possess those things primitively. 
They're depraved and looking in the opposite direction. They're not practicing the art. No. Well, the uh, last couple of sentences from Plato on. puts in the concept of energy and, and uh, immutable energy, and it doesn't play a role. He had that in, in uh, 14. Yeah, yeah, but not here. No, not in 15. No, he's summing 13, 14, and 15 here yeah. in this last, uh, because they are a unit. And he's summing the three chapters together, the hypartis of the God, 13, providential care extending to all things and their mutable energy. Uh, no, wait a second, that should yep. be 15. Right. <laughs> right. Well, immutable meaning that uh, unperturbable. Yeah, of course. But the issue is on energy, not on its immutableness or imperturbableness. Uh -huh. Uh, the idea of energy goes back to 14, I believe. Yeah, well, my point. The point I'm making is that it doesn't play a role in It doesn't play a role in 15. Uh, well, let's see, what is that first? Does that have anything to do with the healing powers? Well, it, it uh, he defines it further in that paragraph, though, doesn't he? Um, the last sentence. For a uniform power axis, a power which providentially takes care of all secondary natures mm -hmm. and an undeviating and immutable intellect are in all the gods that are prior and in the world. Right? Mm -hmm. Now it's an immutable intellect. Yeah. And and a power which which providentially takes care of all secondary nature. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <coughs> see the idea of care <coughs> is different than justice. This is an argument for justice, not care. Mm -hmm. Right. Right? Yeah. Governing. Yeah, this, this, doesn't that, I mean, doesn't that say that there's a certain order here, and, and because of this order, certain things can resemble certain things. We can resemble the gods, we participate greater in those qualities, and therefore we are better because of it. That's an argument for structure, not care. Mm -hmm. right? A power which providentially takes care of all secondary natures mm -hmm. should show itself in the help in which it bestows in bringing about a development. You buy that, man? I lost it. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you care for something, like care for a garden, you, you do something for it to bring about some development. Mm -hmm. But what this argument so far has indicated is a very nice structure about the gods and certain qualities and certain names. And Men who resemble them participate in those things. That's a structure. It's not mm -hmm. clear. Right. 
Yeah. Well, he's been talking about care in 14. See, see he's, he's summing uh, the three chapters. The uniform hypartis goes to 13, a power which providentially takes care of all secondary nature is 14. And the question is, does it care for uh, all or just some? Okay. And it, what would you cite as a clearest example of care of the gods extending to the secondary natures? Since I missed last week. Paying attention uh, to the felicity of the present. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Be care. Rectifying action. Be care. If we stay in this chapter, we need to go what? The governing that they do and being leaders. Takes care of all secondary natures. Wouldn't that still wouldn't that be a consequence of caring something that might come after it but not? Hmm. Well, in the, second sentence, in the second sentence, we have a promise. Mm -hmm. It's prior to everyone that everywhere that which governs according to nature pays all possible attention to the blessed of the government, and this matter becomes a leader of that which is governed and directs it to that which is best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's care. Yeah. It's got to get better. That's care. It directs it to that which is best. That's oh, care. Mm -hmm. Is that care? Mm -hmm. care? No, just directing. It would have to also generate a rectification. I like that. Rectification. <laughs> it would have to make just out of what is in just. <clears throat> Isn't that making it better? Oh, it's doing more than just directing it towards. Oh, you mean it has to get in there and do the work? Yeah. Well, maybe that's not the way. You know, as a manager, you may not do the work, but you direct someone else, and they do the work. Well. Or leader. Maybe directing is doing the work. I don't know. And <coughs> you could say that each of these examples of these leaders <coughs> is an example of <coughs> care. Yeah, that's true. Why does that extend to the gods, though? That uh, insofar as they are said to be leaders and they exercise healing powers and paternal powers, guardians, <coughs> powers, you realize you ignored the point. Does it extend to us? <laughs> I said yes. Yeah. Um, see, that's where the that's where the rhetorical question comes from. How is it possible that they should make that <coughs> complexity of the objects? of their providential care. Uh -huh. Well, it puts it in a rhetorical form because there's <coughs> any argument. Uh -huh. How can they be inferior to the others? Uh -huh. They always look to what's better. That's no doubt. So all of those things can, see, can be under the category of justice, not necessarily care. Uh -huh. He gives justice. He gives structure, doesn't he? <coughs> How clear. about to procure? The good, which is right, right about that's here. Right. Um, that seems to be more of a care action. <laughs> it's it kind of arbitrary more. definition, but to um, let's see. Nor will any other to whom it belongs to be the leader or curator of certain persons endeavor to subvert the good of those that follow him, which it is his business to procure. 
and with a view to which he disposes in a becoming manner everything belonging to those whom he governs. <clears throat> so it seems like he's procuring the good, and that's more than just directing yeah. to that which is best. Yeah. So you can procure <clears throat> for someone's good in a variety of ways. Mm. Right? Uh, the question is, when you use the word care, what kind of intervention are you, are you looking at? Like you can be in a just system. Mm-hmm. That can be to your benefit. Right. But would you say because you're in a just system it necessarily is an activity of someone caring? Mm-hmm. Care is care. See, care has to be personal. Justice is yeah. justice is structural. No, it's They're by the rules. Yeah, it benefits. I mean, it's black and white. Justice is pretty black and white, isn't it? Yeah. You do this, this happens. Pretty good. Can all, it's not denying it's being good. That's right. Mm-hmm. <coughs> well, it looks to me like that is going to be his definition of care, attending in accordance with justice. Because <coughs> in that sentence we were looking at, where he says, um, who perform all things according to justice. Looks like the items that follow that we go back to that according um, to the beginning. They uh, perform all things according to justice, and these are the things they perform. Well, it just doesn't seem to be clear. We do not, in the smallest degree, subvert its boundary or its undeviating rectitude and their providential attention to to all other things. Um, I'm seeing that providential attention as care. Doesn't he say, I can't find it now, but doesn't he say providential care or, yes, down at the bottom, the objects of their providential care. So is, I'm seeing that providential care is the same thing as providential attention. And therefore, if he's saying that the, the um, the way the definition of caring mm-hmm. is going to be according by guiding uh, performing according to justice, providentially. Mm-hmm. Therefore, it's not particular. Well. Yeah. See. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I think you're quite right. Mm-hmm. That's no, but he hasn't stated it any different anyway. It's not too clear that. No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You mean that some other way he's not saying it? No. This whole idea of uh, providence is a function of the gods, isn't it? Right? Yes. Before mm-hmm. knowledge. Before. Then. Before intellect. Before news. Yeah. But it's still going to be personal because it's it's providential care of the holes and the parts. Well, providentially, right, to all other things, and in their mutations of human affairs, is particular. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How do you read that now? I accept the general. Where are you on this point? Oh, well, that's the central, kind of central thing. How, how do you see that expression functioning? Because I'll, certainly providential care is there. I take the idea of particular form of care to come off of uh, wherever I read it. Um, where does he have it in? The mutation of human affairs. Oh, first sentence. Mm-hmm. Oh, the smallest degree. Yeah. There's one. Yeah. 
And in the mutations of And their affairs. providential attention to all other things. And in the mutations of human affairs. But well, not, the only point I think I'm making here is that, that I would expect I would expect to see that care even on the smallest level to be built into the argument. And I do all see the providential or the structure of providence there. Mm -hmm. And pays all possible attention to the felicity of the government? Yeah, all possible attention. Yes, that's down to the particular thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And human affairs, I mean, human affairs are, are conducted by individuals. Mm -hmm. Now, first, I think perhaps someone should argue that, that if you do have providential care in general, you don't have to worry about it manifesting itself in anything particular. Paul, why don't you do that? And say well, because it's automatic. Oh, come on. I mean, it's automatic, and, <laughs> it, and it happens. I mean, if you say one, you say the other. Yeah. <coughs> Maybe like, you can say that. If the, if the, you say well, in general, it's automatic. If, 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 if the radiant sunlight brings about, under certain conditions, growth and nurture and development of a whole variety to a whole variety of living things. You don't have to therefore demonstrate its uniqueness to a particular plant. Mm -hmm. That's what you should. That's why you should be right. Dan, yeah. you shouldn't have to do your work. That I think that that's in a way true. But then, in this uh, at the bottom of 55, it says, "But it will be necessary, uh, which is not lawful to assert, that the gods should regard as their final end the vice of the subjects of their providence, neglect their true salvation, and consequently be alone uh, the causes of." Adumbrant good, but if this speaks of the subjects within the providence, um, both experiencing vice and uh, the lack of vice, and a need for true salvation, that that's within the providence that the need is. So, on a particular or individual level, there must be some additional need for care. You following me? <laughs> I sure do. You just turn that sentence around. I did? Yes, you sure did. Ask backwards. Ten years not being denied. You switched it around. Bill, what do you think? Is that what happened just then? Mm -hmm. What did I do? <laughs> you should tell us. Not ask him <laughs> what you did. I know. It's the negative, see? Yeah, it's the negative. You and you're point. playing with the negative. Okay, because it's not lawful, you mean? That you can't say that that's the case? At least that one point. Oh, right? okay. so you can make them the same session. Right. Right. Well, that was fun. Uh, did Mark leave? Okay. He said he got a list of things or was getting a list of chapters from Rob and where to go in Propolis uh, from Rod on the symposium. Uh, Rod on the Propolis, excuse me. Please look this over, catalog. You see the, uh, when we get the books, we're going to go on those three books, Ramo Maharshi and uh, the Hasidic, the Hasidic work, oh, and the Tibetan book. Oh, Hasidic has something to do with Jewish, is that it? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I knew that word was familiar, and it just flashed on me. Yeah. Okay. That's a close look at the counseling techniques of the Hasidic masters, dream interpretation, shock, problem solving, and the description of spiritual exercises that unlock the door oh boy, at the mind. That's all for nine dollars and ninety-five cents. Hundred and eighty-seven pages. Unlocks the for us to get there. Mind. So after this, we're going there, we're going to Ramana Maharshi and uh, the other one, which is. Uh, what the the we going to have seminar? Uh, it's the work on Rama Maharshi, teachings of Rama Maharshi. When we're going to have what, a seminar. No, what do you mean the question? I just meant the, the name of the book. I think it's called the teaching of Rama Maharshi. Ramana Maharshi. Which I'll check out now.